hey, hey, wake up, wake up. They're still following us, but we, we gotta go. Let's take our time machine back to 2012. Whoa, is that some nights playing by fun? <laughs> It must be 2012. You've been waiting weeks for Brad to ask you to homecoming, but he asks Shelby instead. That backstabbing diva queen. Your world just ended, and on top of that, it's 2012. So the world's actually supposed to end in a couple of months. But it's not ending before the newest teen dystopian movie comes out, The Hunger Games. The teen dystopian young adult adaptation was all the rage in the early 2010s. And it's one of the most interesting things to me ever. How does an entire genre explode in popularity and then just die in like three years? You could not get away from it in the early 2010s and then it barely made it to the mid 2010s the hunger games finale movie was the least popular of the entire series that's not how that happens that's not how it works usually the ending is the most popular of the entire series everyone wants to know what's gonna happen harry potter avengers freaking twilight if i'm being honest this genre feels like it was built for me i love groups of teens fighting together against adults check i love stories where terrible things happen to characters if something bad happens i'm like wait Make it worse. <laughs> Hurt them, kill them off, it's my favorite thing. But even though I love the genre, there's only a couple of movies I can point to and say that were truly amazing. There's just so many. There's The Fifth Wave, I Am Number Four. There's Divergent with one of the main guys, his name is Four, but he's not I Am Number Four, he's just Four. There's Number Four, there's Hunger Games, Maze Runner, The Giver, and I watched all of them for this video. <laughs> My brain hurts. Not only do they not make these movies anymore, but nobody even really talks about them that much. Even Twilight has had a new resurgence of appreciation. A renaissance, if you will. A renaissance, if you won't. It gets a lot of love now on the internet. Short story long, I wanted to take a deep dive into this genre from a movie angle. Because I'm convinced the movies killed this genre even for books. I want to figure out what was good about it and what the heck went wrong. I think we're safe here. I should have never made a video about this. Let's start with the series that basically started it all, The Hunger Games. There's some things I don't like about this movie, but honestly, there's a lot I love. Back when everybody loved Jennifer Lawrence, she had J-Law for a nickname, and we allowed it. She played a character called Katniss. <laughs> And let's be honest, she killed it in this role. What every one of these movies has is, of course, the bad government. What did the bad government do in this series? They divided everyone up into 12 districts and made two kids from each district fight to the death every year. That sounds like a terrible time for these kids. I'm hooked. The story goes into motion when Katniss volunteers to take her little sister's place, and I never noticed this cut before, but this is like one of the most jarring edits I've ever seen in a big budget movie. I've never seen a cut where they literally just have two different takes and put them together. Her entire expression is different in both takes. I volunteer. I volunteer as tribute. But regardless, this movie also has another thing all these movies have, the love triangle. Other two members of the love triangle are Peta, who's so down bad for Katniss, it's embarrassing. And rounding out the main three is Gail, the most boring man of all time. Does a new comrade look handsome? Let's go. Oh! If you're Team Gale, you're a barbarian. You have zero logical thinking skills. I want you to think about everything you value in life and then rethink it. Because this man does nothing for three movies straight and then all of a sudden he's a military tactician. Bro, you were just in the coal mines. It's crazy that this movie was even mainstream. It's pretty brutal. The fact that this was for kids is honestly amazing. I love it. A kid gets destroyed in the first 20 seconds of the games. Almost immediately it's easy to see why the capital would watch something like this. I mean, that's just good TV. I love how they do the countdown at the beginning. I love when she starts tripping out because of the tracker jacker venom and she did the editing starts going crazy. That's what I'm talking about, man. This is the stuff I love. So the first movie is solid. She wins the game. She goes home, but they have to make a part two. Now, usually the sequel is worse than the first one, and that is not the case here because this is cinema. The second movie, Catching Fire, cinema. From the first shot, this movie already looks better. Cinema. There's a scene where Katniss is freaking out and it's all claustrophobic, but then she gets into the games and the aspect ratio is changing as she's entering the game. Fills up the whole screen when she's in the arena. Cinema, man! Come on! The characters are better. Pour one out for my boy Finnick O'Dare, man. 
All I got is hand sanitizer, but the stakes are higher. They're able to do the Hunger Games again, but scarier. This time, in order to get back at Katniss, President Snow has a games with all the previous winners. She's not fighting a bunch of kids now and this one frat boy. She's fighting a bunch of experts and this one frat boy. The movie ends with a crazy cliffhanger. It got great reviews. It was hugely successful. Made a ton of money. At this point, it's like, how, how is this genre gonna die in two years? Cause it's 2013 and by 2015, the genre, the entire genre is dead. That's not possible. It's impossible. It's riding too high, but it wasn't ready for 2014. <laughs> In 2014, three teen dystopian movies came out the same year. Hunger Games Mockingjay Part 1, The Maze Runner, and Divergent. Apparently the author of Divergent wrote this book in three weeks on her winter break in college. And honestly, the college crammer in me respects that. It took me three weeks just to make this video. And they're not making a movie based on this. So shout out to her. You really don't have to try, I guess. But for real, I went into these with an open mind. I haven't heard the best things about the Divergent series. I try to make these videos where I appreciate things in life, you know? Appreciate art, appreciate life in general. This movie broke me, okay? I couldn't find anything to love. I couldn't find anything to hate. The movie is just there. Three times! Shailene Woodley plays a character named Beatrice, but her nickname is just Triss. And from now on, I want all of you to call me by my nickname, Thin. It gets worse, because we meet the love interest whose name is Four. I got a great name for our kids. A real original. You want to hear what it is? Seven. This is essentially, I'm not like other girls, the movie. This is another trope a lot of these movies have. The chosen one, the main character is always the chosen one. In this series, Triss is divergent, which means she doesn't fit into any one faction. She's actually like all the factions in one. She's unique, all right? She's special, okay? Why? I don't know. I barely even understand why the dystopian concept is so bad. There's different factions, but it's not like the districts in Hunger Games where District 1 is super rich and District 12 is super poor. These factions are like, one is nice to people and one has to be truthful. And these guys are smart and the Dauntless are cool and edgy. What makes you think you can talk to me? There's Divergent, Insurgent, Allegiant. And these movies start out fine and they just keep getting worse and worse. I don't even want to get into Allegiant. I'm not, I'm not getting into it. Ansel Elgort plays the most pointless character in young adult history. I feel like I'm hating. But honestly, there just wasn't a single interesting character in these movies. We did it. Thank you. Thank you. Who was that again? I don't care. It made me miss, it made me miss Hunger Games, man. I miss Katniss. You know what, let's go back to Hunger Games. Mockingjay Part 1, I watched it and I liked it, and then the next day I thought about it and I was like, what happened in that movie? What even happened? They spent an hour making a propaganda video. People of Pan Am, we fight! We dare to end this hunger for justice! You've just been in battle! Basically trying to cancel President Snow. <sighs> Cancel culture's gone too far this time, man. But this was the start of a trend that contributed to killing this entire genre. Splitting the last book into two movies. Y'all thought you were Harry Potter. <laughs> Not everyone's Harry Potter. I think it worked for Harry Potter because by the seventh movie, you're basically locked in. You can have one filler movie leading up to the big finale at that point. Hunger Games was literally two movies with great momentum that just got killed off by this third movie. I've only seen you for two movies, all right? I don't know you like I know Harry, Ron, and Hermione. Okay, sorry, Gail. By the last Mockingjay, people had tapped out. They low-key could have had a great trilogy. If they took the best parts from both movies, cut out all the filler, the Hanging Tree song in part one, chills. The action scenes in the sewer in part two, wah, amazing. On top of this, the Divergent series was bold enough to want to split the last book into two movies. Now, you're not Harry Potter, and you're not even Hunger Games, okay? Even though y'all saw what happened to Hunger Games, y'all were like, nah, we're gonna do it right, okay? They I'm not like other girls did, and it backfired. You are actual menaces. So this movie did pretty badly money-wise, critic-wise, fan-wise, and they were like, oh, okay, you know what? We'll do a TV movie for the last one. And Shailene Woodley's like, no, <laughs> you're not about to straight to DVD me. I was Hazel. Okay? So we never get the ending. I watched three movies and there's no ending for this series. Like the storyline at the beginning of this video. What was that all about? Like Allegiance? I guess we'll never know. 
But there's one more thing that started in 2014. By this time, I lost hope in the YA dystopian genre, bro. I just kind of accepted that the Divergent movies is just how they're supposed to be. Like, that's just how the genre is. There's cliches and whatnot, so it's fine. That's fine. Okay, let's go into Maze Runner. Five seconds in, I'm like, yes, this is how you start a freaking movie, man. So mysterious. I have no idea what's going on. All these kids wake up in this enclosed area with no idea who they are or why they're here. There's just a maze surrounding them that no one's ever made it out of. Great mystery, interesting premise. I love the Lord of the Flies angle. The amount of claustrophobia is crazy. I was literally hooked from start to finish. This is low key. Let me not speak too soon here. Maybe this is just because I've been beaten over the head with so many of these that by this point I was just like, this is a masterpiece. <laughs> but this is low key my favorite out of all these movies. It starts out well, builds all the way up really well. It was honestly never a dull moment for me. And the ending made me want more. It didn't leave me pissed off. There's this mysterious company called Wicked. Like, whoa, guys, you think maybe they're the bad guys? Whoa. You might as well call them antagonists. So the first one is a mystery slash adventure. The second one is a straight up adventure movie. And I love that one too. By this point, I realized this is literally cardio the series. Like they, they're running and that, that's all they do is run. But it's just exciting, man. I don't know what it is. It reminds me of like The Mummy with Brendan Fraser. It's just a bunch of stuff going on and they gotta run away from things. And it's just, I love it. It's got Littlefinger and Gus Fring. Come on, I'm in. But this is where the problem comes in. In the second movie of all of these movies, they like meet the rebels. And then the third or last, couple movies. It's just, we have to overthrow the government. By Maze Runner 3, that's what we're doing. By The Last Divergent, that's what we're doing. Last Hunger Games, that's what we're doing. All these movies have an interesting concept, but they're trying to overthrow the government that created that concept in that world. So by the end, that concept is just abandoned. And they lose what makes the movie so interesting in the first place. It's just regular war chaos by the end of all of these. I think it's funny that the director of The Last Couple Hunger Games movies said this after The Last Couple movies did not perform well. Looking back now, I think people found the first two movies fun, which is oddly disturbing. That's crazy to me, that people think of killing kids as fun. The tonal shift after catching fire is the thing that started to throw people. It's like, yes, buddy. That is literally what made the series interesting. Don't act like you didn't know why the movies you made were popular, okay? Don't try to make me feel bad for liking your movies. You buffoon! The thing that usually saves these last movies when they're just fighting against the, the random government is these characters that you're invested in by this point. Like Dylan O'Brien and his friends, Katniss, not you. And if you haven't noticed while I've been talking, there's been another big problem for this genre, and it's oversaturation. There was like four of these movies just in 2014, and they were releasing the movies yearly. Hunger Games 2012, Hunger Games 2013, 2014, 2015. I don't know how they were doing this production-wise, but maybe if they took a little more time to space these out, maybe let them breathe a a little bit. But saturation isn't enough to kill a genre in three years. I mean, like, superhero movies have been around for freaking 15 years at this point, coming out five movies a year, and it's not dead yet. The problem with the teen dystopia genre is they all low key look the same. Is this city from Divergent or Maze Runner? Neither. It's from The Last of Us 2. I guess there's not much you could do visually with a post-apocalyptic teen-led society. Not to mention the fact that people who read the books are usually complaining about how different it is from the books, and people who are only watching the movies are not as invested because they've never read the books. But honestly, while these things were huge, it was pretty cool that we're seeing a female-led blockbuster. Like, we don't see much of that, especially back in 2012. Katniss Everdeen was lit, bro, okay? I love some good bow and arrow action. And she was out there years before Wonder Woman, Captain Marvel. Where were y'all at when Katniss was out out here doing her thing so between oversaturation splitting the last book they made more money at the time but at what cost? People don't really talk about it anymore. Spinoffs and prequel movies are less likely to be successful now. They literally fumbled the bag. I don't miss seeing trailers for like six of these a year, but it was fun looking back at these movies in hindsight. Cause there are some great parts about these movies and their stories and their characters. I'm a little older now, but we need stories like this as young kids. What about you? What do you think about the teen dystopian era? Which one is your favorite or do you hate all of them? Let me know in the comments down below. Now redo Percy Jackson and do it better this time.